We're here at AUSA 2017 and I'm talking with Chris Colquitt, Project Manager, GM Global Fuel Cell Business. Chris, we're standing beside GM's ZH2. We spoke about this vehicle at last year's AUSA. Could you update us on the, on the trials, the developments and, and, and any other movement the project has made since we spoke last year? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's great to be back with you again. As you remember, last year the vehicle was freshly unveiled at this show here at AUSA in 2016. Now after this year, you can see obviously the vehicle has been well enjoyed for the past year. So just bring it up to speed on, on the journey that this vehicle's undergone here since last year's show. Uh, as soon as the show was done last year, we actually brought it out to our Milford Proving Grounds and underwent all of the startup activities on it. So essentially turn the fuel cells on, suspension tuning, brake tuning, essentially getting the vehicle ready to hand over to the U.S. Army. Then in April, we were really happy to uh, give Tardak possession of the vehicle, at which point we started the one year of soldier evaluations. So the Army was actually able to bring the vehicle to Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, Fort Carson, Colorado, um, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, Fort Benning, Georgia, and actually immerse the vehicle into different soldier training and evaluation missions. And so far, the, the results have just been outstanding. Soldiers have really found you know, the, the quiet operation of the vehicle the tremendous torque that's delivered through the driveline, uh, exportable power are all features that are really compelling reasons why fuel cell technology, what we're finding is, really makes a lot of sense for off-road and in, in, uh, potential future military applications. And for those watching that may not necessarily be overly familiar with fuel cell technology, could you give a basic outline of what that actually means? Yeah, absolutely. So fuel cell technology is taking hydrogen as an onboard fuel source. So this vehicle is refilled with hydrogen gas. And then we, that fuel cell, uh, which is the box that you see here um, underneath the hood, converts hydrogen into electricity and water vapor. So electricity to power everything on the vehicle. And then it's a zero emission vehicle, so nothing but water vapor out the tailpipe. What, what do you see the future for this sort of technology within the military environment? Well, so that's what we're continuing to explore. Um, and so right now we still have six months left of testing of the ZH2 uh, with U.S. Army Tardec. And so we're, we're really excited to continue to receive more soldier feedback. But really the ultimate question that this technology uh, was looking in this demonstrator vehicle was looking to answer was, is fuel cell technology suitable for off-road and military vehicles? And I think so far we're seeing the answer is a resounding yes. So we're, we're really looking forward to continuing to explore that further and, and look for opportunities um, where the technology could make sense here in the military space. And from the, tr the, the trials and evaluation that you've previously mentioned, is, is there anything or any things in particular that stand out as perhaps a, a surprising learn or an interesting learn or, or possibly even a learn that you expected to make? Well, so, the, you know, we always have talked about how fuel cells are inherently very quiet. It's a very quiet propulsion system. Uh, in collecting the direct feedback from soldiers evaluating the vehicle, that was actually something that surprised us how important they find that parameter. And, and it enables them to, you know, go 90% closer to an objective without being detected because they, you know, really all you hear is the, the rolling tires coming because the fuel cell propulsion system is so quiet.